All right, so uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, so my name is Mel Chivers and uh, I'm joined by Ammon and Garth, um, but I need to acknowledge all of the other people um, that you can see on the screen here. So uh, this is uh, the names of our project team, but it's also our open research team. Uh, so um, the background to the research that we're presenting on today uh, is uh, we had a restructure um, kind of the middle of last year. So last year, the second half of last year, we were forming a new open research team. Um, and so the opportunity came up to engage with this research. Uh, and we really used it as a learning opportunity and um, uh, I guess an opportunity to put into practice some of the best practice things that we're uh, telling researchers about. So the research project. Um, so the project was commissioned by our Deputy Vice Chancellor Research. Uh, so she was wanting to know um, about how researchers, about how our researchers feel about metrics and how they feel uh, that those metrics represent their, um, their work. So we started off with these research questions, which are actually um, on reflection quite narrow. And so we're going to focus on a few of the themes that came out of our research today. Um, but you'll note that they're probably a bit broader than, than what you can just um, see from these questions. So our approach was a case study approach. And so we only had 13 semi-structured interviews. So it's really um, an exploratory uh, research project. So um, we interviewed established academic staff at our university across a range of subjects. Um, so in New Zealand, we have the um, PBRF research evaluation um, system. So we interviewed one person uh, from each panel. Uh, so the interviews were kind of mostly focused around what we call a research profiles health check, which is something that we've kind of been offering for a few years. Uh, and so it goes through a whole bunch of different metrics um, across a range of different platforms, um, both traditional uh, and alt metrics. And we did expand this for the project. Uh, so then we asked, so the interviews kind of went through asking for um, feedback and thoughts on the various metrics, but we also asked them more broadly about their research goals um, and, and why they research and what constitutes success for them. So I'll come over to Ammon now. Kia ora mai I'm trusting that you can see me. Cool. Um, yeah, kia ora mai tato. Uh, I'm Emin Apiata, I'm the Māori and Indigenous Research Support Advisor in the Open Research Team. So I'm just going to speak really briefly about um, our approach to managing our data and especially in sort of in the context of uh, managing our uh, indigenous, indigenous data. So um, like Mel mentioned, we are a newly formed team, so we use this uh, research project as a chance to um, not only apply best practice, but to um, get firsthand experience of the sort of practicalities or impracticalities or challenges in this space of research data management. Um, we also gave, uh, well, it also gave us an opportunity to think about our approach to handling Indigenous data, so Māori data here in New Zealand. Um, and at our institution, we currently don't have uh, a Māori data sovereignty uh, policy or position statement, um, though that is something that's a work in progress. Um, and so we relied heavily on resources that were um, created by Te Mana which is the Māori data sovereignty network here in uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand. So um, I've got some definitions up there on the slide, which um, just sort of gives you a, a, an abbreviated brief uh, scope of what is considered Māori data, so uh, anything sort of produced by Māori or about Māori and the environments that we have relationships with. And so there's also um, just a phrase there, data as a taonga, so just to give a bit more context to that uh, as a reference to um, uh, a line from our treaty that we have here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, so taonga being something of value or anything uh, valuable to Māori, so in a modern context, anything that is uh, 
that that's inclusive of uh, digitizable information about Māori um, is, is uh, included in that. So the Indigenous data sovereignty uh, principles that we followed um, were very much, yeah, very much came from Te Manararonga. And so knowing that we would have Māori participants in our research, we decided to treat our whole data set as Indigenous data. And so that led to interesting interactions with um, uh, our attempts to go about that. So first of all, trying to request local service space. Um, you know, we sort of contacting IT and being getting a little bit of a pushback of um, why can't you just put it on the cloud and then asking, well, do you know what country the, the cloud is stored in? And then, then them saying, okay, no, we don't. So just starting those conversations and being able to um, see what level of awareness is out there in our own institution uh, was really helpful for us. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it, it gave us the right sort of um, avenues to to advise others who are going down that same path. So yeah, that's um, our data management approach. So kill the, pass it to Garth. Hi, uh, I'm Garth. Uh, I'm going to highlight some a uh, few of the findings from the project. Uh, there were some that are already fairly common knowledge to the industry, things like how there's no one-size-fits-all metric and different disciplines are represented differently in traditional metric, metrics. Uh, but there were some other insights uh, with things like uh, an overriding anxiety about metrics across disciplines, while some interviewees uh, did not have an in-depth understanding of the limitations of various metric metrics. They felt that the university leadership should be responsible for understanding and monitoring the use of metrics, which was uh, quite an interesting perspective. There was also uh, strong skepticism around alt metrics and social media metrics. Uh, there was a strong sense that alt metrics could be manipulated more uh, than the traditional metrics. Uh, six out of 13 of the interviewees specifically stated that they did not engage with social media when they were asked about their thoughts on alt metrics, although some admitted that they should engage more with so, uh, social media. Overall, though, there was a general feeling that uh, metrics were a poor proxy for quality and a general lack of confidence that metrics were, would be used in the right ways. Um, and get to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, there was also a general lack of understanding of what metrics uh, they were and what how they were made up. Um, there was a general feeling that they were not well understood by not just themselves but other researchers in their fields, uh, and that metrics were problematic in their application. Uh, researchers tended to latch on to one metric uh, that they liked and that they recognized and understood and just uh, thought they understood and just stick with that, despite how other metrics uh, would possibly provide a better uh, metric score for them. There was some uncertainty or, or confusion over the differences between different platforms that the metrics come from. Um, multiple interviewees questioned the accuracy of one platform over another, and they tended to settle with the uh, one that produced a bigger number for their chosen metric. Uh, this uh, example uh, quotes from the, the report are uh, just a small sense. Uh, we did only have 13 interviewees. Um, so I'm just going to hand over to Amon to go over some of the traditional, uh, some of the um, cultural considerations. Yeah, kia ora no. Um, so I'm just going to speak briefly uh, about some of the conversations that uh, emerged from the interviews with, with some of the Indigenous academics. So 
I don't think it should come as a as a surprise that like extra cultural labor um, in its many forms was something that was talked about in these um, discussions with our indigenous academics and specifically how um, this a lot of this labor and work is not recognized in any kind of metric. Um, and so I'm not going to focus too much on this point other than to acknowledge that it did come up um, and particularly in around uh, conversations about mentorship and providing pathways and opportunities for for younger Indigenous scholars uh, coming up through their postgraduate studies um, and that added cultural and administrative labour that goes into building them up. So um, acknowledge that I really did want to focus on for this theme was the tension and compromise that they talked about. Um, and so I think we more often hear about how Indigenous scholars align their work in service of their home communities, and usually that's a community outside of the academy. Um, but something really important that came out of these discussions was the commitment to scholarly communities, and particularly our global Indigenous scholarly communities um, and the knowledge systems that their work feeds into. So it may be worth noting here too that uh, of the Indigenous academics that participated in this research, um, none were situated in a discipline uh, that, should we say, traditionally centres Indigenous perspectives in life. So one of the Indigenous academics talked about the tension between satisfying research assessment criteria and their drive to maintain the quality of their field of knowledge. Um, so to unpack that a bit more, they mentioned in the interview about essentially having to, in some ways, dilute their work or content when submitting to these global, highly ranked journals, which um, are weighted more heavily in New Zealand's research assessment uh, systems. Uh, and the struggle of dealing with journal reviewers who don't grasp the nuance or context of, of their work, which is Indigenous focused. So I just want to sort of point to your attention to the first quote on that slide. Uh, we're not writing for scope and scale. We're writing for the quality of a knowledge system. We're writing because we want to bring that Indigenous voice forward. Um, if I was going to be really tactical, I would abandon all of that and just write for scale and write to have the most broadest citation marketplace appeal. So as many consumers of my work would be interested in citing it. So to me, that's a fundamental tension in the way that citations are used to grade a scholar's, uh, scholar's quality of work. So she's... In that interview, they're pointing out that tension of making their work more palatable to not only the journals and the reviewers, but to the readers to increase the likelihood of citations. Um, they then also talked about how um, local journals that have uh, more expertise and experience in profiling and presenting and publishing Māori research or Indigenous research um, they have a much more positive experience there. However, the flip side to that is that those journals are often not as highly ranked um, in, the, in the research assessment criteria. So there is this trade-off of doing things that will contribute to um, their own career progression and trajectory and doing things for their community, which um, I don't want to imply are always going to be mutually exclusive. Um, though I think this is an important point that arose out of our conversations with them because it directly speaks to our researchers' experiences of uh, being assessed using these quantitative measures. So, yeah. Back to you, Gav. So we've got, uh, we just one more slide on the findings, which is uh, the varying levels of importance. In getting the research out there, we've had a lot of, uh, when asked about the dissemination of their research to the public, there was varying levels of understanding in relation to communicating their research, as well as making their work publicly accessible um, through open access. While the majority of interviewees agreed in principle that open access publishing was important and expressed support for it, less than half of the participants made a deliberate effort to exclusively uh, publish open access in their own careers. Uh, those that did strongly value open access had research goals that included influencing public decision-making and social policy. Uh, but in general, awareness of green open access and institutional repositories uh, varied and most cited barriers to green open access, which in, included uh, time and understanding of what was needed of them. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, 
pass that on to Mel now. Thank you. All right, and I'm aware of the time. <laughs> uh, so uh, moving on to our conclusions. So um, so far, our conclusions, it was very clear from, from all of the interviews that our researchers care deeply about their research and they care about the impact that they view as meaningful, um, but that metrics act as a barrier to that impactful research um, and are a source of stress for researchers. Uh, one of the other things was that, uh, so the current research evaluation systems actively uphold norms grounded in Western worldviews um, and often male worldviews, and that uh, this is particularly harmful for Indigenous scholars, um, but also for other scholars as well. Uh, so there needs to be a greater awareness of the breadth of metrics available, and um, that was very clear, um, there needs to be an understanding of the limitations of metrics and a less reliance on metrics at all levels. But for our researchers to change their behaviours in terms of metrics, they need to know that other stakeholders in the system, so that's their colleagues, their managers, um, uh, yeah, everybody at all, all levels um, need to be acting according to similar principles. So there kind of needs to be a good faith there. Uh, and so for this reason, we really need to have a culture change and that needs to start with wide ranging conversations and visible buy-in at all levels. Uh, so at the moment, oh, move on to the next slide. Um, so at the moment, what we've done is we have, um, almost <laughs> finished a large or quite extensive internal report which will shortly be released to um, our own research like so our own university um, and so at the moment our recommendations are quite internal so we have um, recently subscribed to Overton to kind of increase the, um, the ability and range of citations um, we recommended improving awareness around responsible metrics use and expanding how research impact is evaluated. Um, and for our team, we're really looking at developing and uh, reframing our research support for the university uh, staff. So it really comes at quite an opportune time um, as we've got a new team and we are kind of in the process of, of evaluating anyway, so that this uh, the findings from this research are just going to be vital for, for that development. Um, and then one of the other major recommendations that we have is um, the push um, and need to move towards a more respect responsible metrics culture um, within our university um, and hopefully wider as well. So, um, you know, whether that's through policies um, and signing up to things or moving towards signing up <laughs> to um, DORA. Um, and of course, acknowledging that signing statements and, and uh, releasing policies in themselves don't create change, but it can start to act as, as a catalyst. catalyst for that change. 